there are many free AI open source tools to generate images with in-painting and out-painting capabilities. Even though they are kind of cool, they are not easy to set up and definitely not so user-friendly as the generative fill option in Photoshop. However, that is going to change with this new generative AI plugin for Krita. I'll put a link in the description. I'm not a very frequent user of Krita, but this plugin is just amazing. It has a ton of features and the installation, especially in Windows, is peanuts. Just follow the instructions and you have it installed within minutes. Keep in mind, just like with any local AI generation tool, that you probably will need a juicy graphic card with enough memory. The plugin will download all the base models, the LoRa models and anything else it needs. It's definitely plug and play. In Krita, you just enable the AI generation docker and you're good to go. For example, in this image I've removed the chain and added a spaceship. Let's take a quick look how I did that. I'll make a copy of the original and create a new document from the clipboard. The first thing I'll do in the AI panel is to change the model to digital artwork as this fits better with the current image. Using the freehand selection tool in Krita, I'm going to select the chain. In the AI panel, I can select an action. In this case, I'll choose remove content and press the button. Just like in Photoshop, it will generate a couple of options, which are pretty good actually. I'll choose the first alternative and press apply. Awesome! Now let's add something new to the image. I'll make the selection again where I want my spaceship to be. For the AI action I'll choose add content. Because we are adding content I need to give a prompt telling the AI what I want to be added. It will generate a couple of options but I feel they are too strong. We can however lower the strength and generate again. By lowering the strength the model will use more of the existing image. This looks pretty nice. Let's apply this. As you might have noticed it is non-destructive. Just like the Photoshop version. It just adds a new layer with the changes. Here's a cool feature I think Photoshop doesn't have. We can use helpers or control layers. I'll hide the current spaceship layer and add a new paint layer. In this paint layer I'll draw the raw shape of a spaceship I want. Now in the AI panel I'll add a control layer and by default the scribble control is added and it has automatically chosen the paint layer I just used to draw the rough sketch. I'll make sure I select the area again and this time choose fill as the action. Awesome! Two options that look pretty nice and as you notice it used my sketch as a base. Let's switch to another image. Here I want to get rid of these lanterns. I'll select them and make sure the AI model is set to cinematic photo and use the remove content action. Not perfect but still very cool. As it generated a tree I can select around the tree and remove that to get a better result. Let's switch to another image which I have expanded using this tool. It works very similar as the Photoshop Generative Expand. I'll expand the image to the left and then we'll select the white area. I can now use the Expand action and it just creates some cool options. Let me expand the right and the top and use the Expand function again after making sure the expanded area is selected. I'm not happy with the clouds, but we can just select the sky, put in a prompt and use the fill action to get some alternatives. As you see it works quite well and is super user friendly. No need to go to a website, upload images, download them, import them and so on. I wish Affinity would implement this. Let's go crazy and add a hot air balloon. Easy peasy. Another cool trick is to transform photos to different styles by using the reference control. By playing with the prompt and different strength values you can get pretty interesting results. Here is another crazy feature, the live feature. 
I'll enter a prompt of what my final image should be and then start drawing on the document with the brush. It will use my simple drawing as a base to generate the prompt I used. Currently, it doesn't do a very good job as the strength is quite low. But when I crank up the strength, have a look at that. This is so much fun to play with. You can change the seat to get different images, change the style or lower the strength to your needs. I have used many open source free AI tools, but this is by far the most friendly tool coming very close to what Photoshop offers. Another thing to keep in mind is that this all runs locally, which is definitely a plus regarding privacy, but also costs. I hope Affinity will implement scripting features like Krita very soon, and hopefully we will get these kind of plugins in Affinity too. Thanks again for tuning in. Let me know in the comments if you would like to see a more detailed video about this plugin. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons before you leave. Until the next video.